Happy Tuesday. Today, we're going to get into a program for a client with some tight hips. I had a couple DMs from some clients, and they were asking about some hip exercises. And I responded back to one of the clients, and I'm like, that's going to be a perfect tweet. So I tweeted that today, and uh, the it was addressing tight hips. And so I'll, I'll go ahead and read you this this case example and this one actually is funny because well let's see this is, this is what you're going to get used to as a trainer so we have a 22 year old female 5'6 130 bmi of 21 she's an it advisory associate with kpmg what is that anyone no kpmg Sounds like a radio Okay, that's one of the big four. Accounting firm. There you go. It's one of the big four accounting firms like Deloitte, KPMG. And so uh, she graduated college, went right there, and, and now she's working. So she turns 23 in three months. I've always felt like I've struggled with body image. I gained around 15 pounds after graduating and beginning work for my current company. I believe part of what was diet and part was not understanding what my body needs for exercise. I want to change so I can feel what's behind here. I can feel that's it. more confident and less uncomfortable in my own skin. My knees are extremely sensitive. Any jumping or anything like concrete tends to cause pain. So I try to stay away from burpees or jumping. Morning's okay on my knees. I have pretty tight hips and they have been known to lock up in odd positions when I climb as well. I run six miles every other day during the whole work week and I can run it steadily under an hour. So six miles, you're looking at a 10 mile pace. As a result, I signed up for a half marathon in three months. So that would be nice to be fit for. I also would just like to feel more comfortable in my own skin and I need to understand how to exercise properly to get there. Three years ago, I was in the shape of my life because I was in school and faced a little anxiety with work. I fly every Monday and Wednesday, so traveling produced a lot of anxiety around my work. Current program, she rock climbs and runs frequently for three times, three to five times, uh, to 23 minutes and the 60 minutes as well. But I find myself struggling with my arms. So address a couple of things. And I, I credit a lot of this to my dad because he's a shrink and I take more of the psychological approach. On our actual assessment in person, we have uh, three answers for your biggest, biggest three areas of stress. And I shit you not, I've gotten this numerous times. And it is the number one red flag that I have. And does anyone know what that red flag is when it comes to stress in that situation for three spots? Sleep. Hmm? Sleep is important, but what's the next one? Image, maybe. So, yeah, okay. So you're on the right path because... From the cycle, from the psyche, if you caught that, she made reference to it three times in this assessment. So that's uh, that's alarming to me, and I, I, it's always funny when I get this. But on the a form that we have, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten stress, 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 or husband, husband, husband. So they don't just put it once; they put it three times. That's alarming because. I'm not asking for the same one three times, but that's what's on your mind. You're hyper-focused on that one thing. So that is, that's one of the first things that stood out to me about this is her, her struggle with body image. So at five, six, one thirty, that's, uh, it's a perfectly, and again, we don't have her in front of us and BMI does not take into consideration muscle mass. So it just gives us kind of a hypothetical image of this individual, but we right. can, um, we can kind of get an idea of, let's see real quickly, someone else. The basement? Yeah, so the kids. Um, let's mute off. Shut your mouth. There we go. So you can kind of get an idea of, I would just classify her as kind of soft skinny. Um, typical in LA, you find people who want to grow their glutes. She probably doesn't have much glute development and she wants, you know, toned arms. And so let's address a few issues first off. Uh, I think this would be a very manageable thing to help. So 
Uh, is her current program more aerobic or is it more anaerobic? Aerobic. Aerobic, so she's training her type one muscle fibers. Can type one muscle fibers grow? Yes, how? So we have type one, type two, type, type one A, type one AC, two A, two AC, two AX. You got a bunch of different fibers, but the two categories would be one and two. Two can grow larger than one in order for one to grow. And you need to implement the mechanisms of hypertrophy. So you would need to take them to volitional fatigue. And running is not volitional fatigue. It's tough on the cardiorespiratory system. Don't get me wrong. I just ran a, a mile this morning and there was, I wanted to stop after the first lap. It's challenging, but it's not exhaustive and you're aerobic. And so you're, you're not going, you're going to be using fat as a primary fuel source. The intensity therefore will be low. Um, if she's running a 10 minute mile, I guarantee she'll probably be able to talk during that run. So again, it's just an, uh, it's more of a, of just lower intense. I'm not knocking running. It's always to be kind of careful with how you address this stuff, but running is fine to do. She seems to like it, but I'm going to get to that body image stuff. And let's, let's kind of paint me a picture of what you're looking for. Because if you want more development, we need to implement strength training. And what she's going to say, well, rock climbing is very arduous and it requires a lot of strength. Yeah, it does. She may surprise me and she may be able to do some pull-ups because of what she does. But we are not loading up the lower body in a capacity to truly adapt and get what she wants. And so this is actually a pretty simple case. The programming would be very normal to what we've seen in the past. I wanted to address a couple issues what were some issues that, that kind of stuck out to you guys that you wanted to address? You said her knees are extremely sensitive. So it sounds like she's got hesitation with jumping. Yeah, so anytime someone has a problem like that, what do you think I'm going to do? You're not gonna make her jump right away, but you're gonna ask her what exercises has she done that brings out the pain or good good mark and I, I might surprise you right here but i'm actually going to do that so i'm sitting down with her and she says jumping irritates my knees i'm gonna say okay like burpees do so when was the last time you did this and she said maybe a couple of weeks ago all right so i want you actually to show me right now how you jump i'm not talking about loading her up with a bunch of weight on her back this is a body weight exercise and she she's done it before she, she's going to show me the mechanism what hurts and so it's like if someone says that when i bench press my shoulder hurts i'm gonna say let's go bench press i want to see when and where it hurts i want to check you out in action and so i'm, I'm gonna have her jump um and i'm gonna let her know it's like for the first one do it like 50 percent. so don't do it 100 percent. i don't want you to put too much stress on your knees but i just kind of want to check it out and probably what I'm going to see are two things here. One is, mind you, I'm not even addressing the, the Tinkerbell jumps in the crappy form, but I'm going to see a, uh, a rough, uh, I'm going to see valgus during the concentric portion. So she's going to load up. And then when she jumps, she's probably going to get some valgus, probably more likely on one leg. And her landing is going to be very hard. It's, you see that 99 out of 100 times. So it's just, it's, it's, just, it's almost rough to watch. So I'm saying, great. All right. So you're sensitive to doing burpees, which typically are taken to fatigue and the burpees are fine to do. Uh, I don't know if you like burpees. I never start lamb basting exercise and saying they're terrible. I always kind of get a feel for that person because like she's, she's sensitive with her body image. If I start knocking her saying burpees are dumb and she's like, burpees are my favorite exercise. I miss doing them. I don't want to offend her. So I'm going to kind of get a feel for where she's at with that. So I'm going to see how she jumps and I'm going to fix up her jumps real quickly. Uh, teach her how to land, uh, probably just start with more stabilization jumps where you cock your arms back, you hold, and then we're going to, I tell her to clear a penny. So this is how big I want you to jump. Just very, maybe a hair off the ground and then work on the landing and the landing needs to be soft. And we're going to do that for, you know, sets of five to six and just get you comfortable with absorbing the shock. And most importantly, I don't want to experience any of that pain. And I'm, um, very, very confident that just a couple sets of those that she's not going to have any pain when she jumps and then I'll even probably progress her to unilateral jumps. So she would jump bilaterally, land on one leg and that same clearing a penny. So how that would look is 
start here, load, and then to one leg. So I would just work on those mechanics because jumping doesn't hurt your knee. Uh oh. Jumping doesn't hurt your knees. Poor jumping mechanics does. So where'd you? Ah, I just got out of that. Damn it. One second. Let me pull this back up. Okay. So then what the knees will address that? What's the second thing that came up to you? She runs quite a bit. So she does maybe look at her running form like ask her to you know jog in front of you come back so then you can again see um where she hits on her foot when she is in her stride and if she has any valgus while she runs as well great yep so if she's running six miles do you guys know the rough estimation guesstimation how many repetitions per mile it's always a fun one go ahead mark no, nothing. You're looking at a taller person, closer to a thousand reps, a shorter person, closer to 1500 reps per mile. So when you run a marathon, 30 to 40,000 repetitions, it's just wear and tear on your body. So she's running six miles every other day during the work week. You know, that's her, you know, her economy for the week, 30 to 40 miles. That's, you know, she's getting where a her knee lot. Is from. What's that? Probably where her knee is, she's coming from. Probably, and running is primarily what plane of motion? Sagittal. So I'm going to see how we can do some unilateral strengthening, but I also want to get her in the frontal plane. I'm gonna, I already have some, an idea of some exercise I will show beforehand, but the running definitely is probably why her knees hurt. And um, what's the other issue that we need to address? Her tight hips. Good. And this is interesting because, and this is just how it is. You're going to, you're going to experience stuff like this and you didn't sign up for it, but your clients are going to tell you stuff that is a little more personal than you thought. But do you guys know what she's making reference to right here when she says they've been known to lock up in odd positions? <laughs> uh, there you go. And that's what sure. she was making reference to. So at first, I kind of looked at it twice. I was like, locked up in linear positions. But then when I climbed well, I'm like, well, what is she kind of referencing to? And so I said, okay, let's talk more about your hips. And she was very kind of shy about it. I'm like, all right, so, you know, let's feel free to, you know, keep whatever you need to you. But I've had clients in the past because I had, and I'm like, they've experienced during intimate times that they get their hips to lock up. And it's very uncomfortable in certain positions. She's like, that's exactly what I was experiencing. And so I said, okay, so what we need to do is we need to, uh, address the whole hip complex. And so more than likely what we're the bully here is the psoas. And the psoas is one of the only muscles that's going to go from your lumbar region into the lower region of the femur. And so it's primarily a flexor, but it does externally rotate. It does slight abduct. And it's a pretty cool muscle because it's on the anterior portion of the spine. And if you haven't gone to our website, we have a complete anatomy breakdown of most of the muscles that you can see on there but it's on the anterior side. So you, if you were to go through my gut right here and my spine is like this, it originates off these uh, vertebrae and then it comes down and straight down into the femur. And so in my opinion, as I put in that tweet, the psoas is, is just, it's picked on too much. It's not that it's weak because we do not concentrically train it very much. It's a lot of repetitions. You're looking at, you know, a thousand repetitions of, of, of concentric action at the hip. And that can be very uh, overwhelming on it. And just like people who work at a store, you get carpal tunnel to repetition after repetition. And so for, for her, my guess is that it's somewhere else around the hip that's causing the issues and it's just it's being picked on i like to use a couple different examples the one i use is a hose example if you're washing your truck and water doesn't come out of the nozzle you're not going to look at the end of the nozzle and get mad at it and start smacking it why isn't it coming out you're going to go find the kink so what we need to do is we need to find the kink and because running is very sagittal based my bet is 
it's just overworked and the lagging muscles of the adductors, the medial part, the posterior with the glutes and then the lateral of the glute med and like the TFL, they're not doing their job. So imagine if you had an a, a Olympic team, four rowers, and all of a sudden one of the rowers doesn't show up anymore. Everyone has to pick up the slack. And typically that, that stud is going to, or studette is going to pick up that slack. And a lot of times it's going to be the psoas. So it's just, it's unfortunate because it's not loaded very much. And if it's not loaded, it's, it's prone to being overworked. And so what I want to do is show her some exercises that would help strengthen the psoas, but also address medial, posterior, and lateral weakness. And so when we go into the programming that I would design for her, I would do a very in-depth warm-up. And the warm-up would be, uh, I would get her into a 90-90 position. And I would show her external, internal. And we've, we've done those before. I have it on YouTube. But you start out with your left leg externally rotated, and then your right leg would be internally rotated. And then we work on mobility. So I, I, I doubt she's done these before, but a 90-90 hip flow is great for helping your clients just kind of open up that area. Because we need to determine, is it the issue coming from a mobility, stability, it could be weakness or neuromuscular control. So if we do a 90-90, that's usually my go-to. I would go from there into planks, also side planks with abductions. I call those like star planks. I love these because it tells me a lot about the unilateral strength. So you're on a, your side and then you just lift up your legs straight up in the air while you're doing that plank. And if she can't hold that for 15 seconds, that's a, it's a pretty good sign that her, her abductors are pretty darn weak. And then I want to do some single leg uh, hip bridges. I'd also want to do some uh, with these side plank abductions. And then what was the other one I wanted to do? Um, the walk, toes. When you do band walks on your toes, you have to get more external rotation so it fires up the hip a lot more. You'll notice when you put it closer above your knee, it's not as uh, taxing on the on the glutes. And Brett Contreras just did a post about this, identifying the difference between uh, abductions at the knee versus the ankle versus the toes. And you just get so much more activation when it's going to be on your toes. So I would want to notice how I'm a – go ahead. When you say band walk on the toes, is the band around yeah. the toes? So let me, if I had a band, actually, hold on a second. I might go. Um, I don't, but this will work. So you got your little hip circle. So I'd actually want these to be on your toes like this. So then they pull you in, you have to externally rotate. Now you can also do like X band walks where you put it on your toes like this and then you come out and then you slow down, come out concentrically, slow down. A lot of people screw this up because they go fast and then they recoil in quick. And I don't want that, I want to go fast and then control. So when you put it around your toes, it's just going to be a lot superior. I would also do with the plank, if you, I always ask people like if they have a wood floor, like, like I have, because you can do a plank in your socks and then you work on abductions. So essentially what we're trying to do is activate your glute med, upper fibers, your glute max, I want to also get the uh, adductors involved. And then one of my last ones I like to do is um, hamstring eccentrics. So imagine uh, like a, if you have a stability ball, you do leg curls. I like to do just a bridge position with either like a valve slide disc. If you wanted to get like paper plates on a, a, a slidey floor or just use your socks and you bridge up and then you just eccentrically slide your feet out. If you can concentrate, bring it back, great. 
it's just essentially a, a modified Nordic. If you could do a Nordic, that's great. But uh, I like this concoction of a warm up, and then I like when before I go on my run, I always do calf raises. That's the last thing I'll do: single leg calf raises. What I would do is I would film her doing these, and then I would send it to her. But this is our warm up that we need to do every single time before she runs. Now, if we were a betting group and I'm a big gambler. So if we had a bet, what do you think her current warm-up routine is like? Walking to get her running shoes. Yep. Bending down, tying up her shoes and go for a run. Let's, let's be honest. We're most of us do that. I'm going to go for a run. You put your shorts on, you put your beanie on, you put your shoes on, you walk to where you want to go. You find your song you start out at a slow jog and then you're going to pick it up later on. And so uh, it's a ton of repetition, sagittal plane. We're not strengthening all parts of the hip. So I would be willing to bet within a week or so, if not even quicker, you're going to notice a substantial difference in your knee pain, also spring in your step. And you're probably going to be setting some PRs on your, on your miles because you're going to start strengthening those areas. And so uh, the 90-90 will probably take care of her, her tightening up in weird positions, uh, strengthening the, the anterior core, the glutes, and then the adductors, and then the, the band walks would be great for uh, frontal plane. So that would be her little go-to. And again, this is an awesome time for everyone right now to think about these hypothetical clients. As we put this uh, case example out there, when you meet with every single client, this is years, this is 15 years of assessments that we've gotten at Show Up Fitness. And so every time you meet someone, film it. Meaning, I just had this hypothetical client. If I were to film a great running routine, now it's on YouTube. So if I meet someone tomorrow or a year later, I have that saved and I can just send it to them. And that's personalization. People really appreciate that. And so when we get into our programming, we're going to do our normal core patterns, accessory, and I'll do a core, core accessory, and then the core accessory. Now, the core patterns that I'm gonna focus on with her are gonna be uh, lower body because we wanna strengthen up her, her lower half, but also to get her some more, um, I remember vividly with this, this girl when I met with her, she wanted to develop her glutes and so, I would start off with hip thrust here. So you could do any type of hinge pattern. So it's a core pattern. We got a hinge, a unilateral squat, a push, a pull. So then I would do an upper body one here, push-ups. And then you have the, the ability to incorporate correctives in this accessory if you thought that it would be valuable for her. So you could do like a, a jump stabilization thing that we discussed earlier, because we're not doing these maximally. We're just working on uh, the proper form. Maybe you want to do some airplanes that would help with glute med strengthening uh, on a BOSU ball if you wanted to. Um, maybe she, maybe this would be a great opportunity to do more frontal plane isolation. So band walks here, um, even if you wanted to do Nordics, if you felt like it was appropriate or reverse Nordics, I would be okay with even putting cardio in here if it was frontal plane based, like jumping jacks or even jump rope, because it's just good to change up the, the mechanism of behind all of her repetition. And so that would be a good starting point for this routine. And do you think we're going to be going real heavy with her? Not at the start. Not even at the start, but I'm not going to go that heavy with her anyways, because her goal is going to be more for her sport, which is aerobic based. Even rock climbing uh, is, is not going to be, again, it's challenging because of the, the workload, but I wouldn't classify it as like, you wouldn't want to get down like to the strength range. So 10 to 15 reps, first one, doing 15, you do some push-ups, maybe when she's doing the push-up. I, I would definitely assume that she's going to be pretty good with push-ups because she does a rock climbing. So she does a push-up. We're going to AB duck. She's going to drive against me, a trainer engagement, and then we do some jumping jacks. Add some weight. We do 12 reps on the hip thrust, and then we do the other side for the push-ups, and then we do the jumping jacks again. And then we put on the heaviest weight of the day. 
We do it for 10 reps. The last rep, you have a hold, 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 five seconds, complete maximal voluntary contraction, get that posterior tilt. Maybe even push your legs in a little bit to drive out abduction. You do the push-ups. Maybe you have to like touch your toes or something to get that core activation. And then you do your third round of the jumping jacks. So then what I would do here is, depending on what she's comfortable with, she does a lot of running. So what unilateral core exercise do you think would be good? Step ups or reverse lunges. Yeah, I think those would be good. And I might even entertain doing a step up in the frontal plane. So doing it to the side just to get that more abduction. And then if we did the push ups, now I want to play around with the pull ups to see what she's capable of. And she could really surprise you. Maybe uh, it's, you know, she cranks out sets of five or six. Well, then do a couple eccentric. At the end, uh, maybe we want to do some Nordics here because you, she's stronger than you thought. Uh, maybe on that last round of the pull-ups, you do a fun little challenge and you see how long she can hold for, you know, four fingers on. Again, I'm assuming that she's pretty uh, damn good at pulling because of the rock climbing. So, you know, maybe see how long she can hold uh, a pull-up like this or maybe even three fingers. She might surprise you. So have fun with that. So we do each circuit as a round. So we would do these three. When we're done with these three circuits, we would go to the second one, step ups, and you can add weight. Uh, just hold it down to the side and then we do our pull-ups and then we do our Nordics. How many reps do we want to do with the Nordics? Maybe three to six. Yeah, three to six is good. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause a lot of damage. So I wouldn't want to do more than six for the first round. Chat with her to see how she's feeling. So we have our unilateral. And then here I might even throw her a curveball and do some pistol squats and really focus on the eccentric because I really want to get individual leg strength here. So that's why I'm going to do two uh, unilateral ones. You could have done a, a goblet. Maybe that's what you're thinking on this one, which would have been a fun. But I, I, I think, and I was uh, right from assuming from her reading what she, uh, she submitted. But when I met her in person, she was, she was definitely very capable. And I wanted to do some exercise that she could incorporate at home. And I would like to be able to get her to do concentric pistols as well. So we just did five per leg on this one. And then even on the last set, we held out a five in front of her. And when you start adding artificial stability of the core back by putting a weight there, you'll find that they actually get a little easier. So she was able to do a five and a 10 pound uh, pistol. And then you can add in here anything that she's trying to focus on. Talk about her insecurities that she mentioned earlier. Uh, that's one of my go-to questions. You know, if a genie were to pop out, what would be your magical number one body part that they suggest or you would want? And so if she says um, glutes, maybe you do some like frog pumps here and you really try to get the, the burn. Do something that she hasn't done before. And then you could add in some wall sits, which are great for tendon health of the knee, especially for your runners. And so this would be a great program to help her with her goals to address injuries that she has strengthen her glutes which are probably lagging behind uh, and the, the psoas taking over we're um i will actually retract one and let's here i'm going to take out this one and i'm going to do the banded flexes the reason because i mentioned that earlier so let me show you one last time what i would do here is you get your fair band the bands are like this big Put it on your toes and then you go. And that's really going to load up the psoas. So I only got this band right here. It's not the best, but essentially it looks like this. You just go hold, slow down, slow down. Maybe at the end to help strengthen. You do a little ab circuit. Are you in this ab circuit? You could add in some, um, like you're on your back, like do little flutter kicks but then you put the band back on the toes and you work on more flexions. So that would be a great program addressing her concerns, giving her a, a program that would help her get stronger, 
help her develop her body a lot more because everything she's doing is a ton of repetition, not a lot of overload. And so the hip thrust, your glutes are going to get stronger. Uh, they're going to get more voluptuous in about, you know, three, four months, you'll start seeing a change there for, if we're training consistently. So that second workout, what I would do with her when she comes back in is still stick to the same ones. Uh, maybe you start out with hip thrust, but this time you add a band on, do the push-ups again, but maybe you do a couple more. And now you, you show her another flexion exercise and that flexion exercise, what I call um, ice skaters. So, you know, no, not ice skaters, uh, I call them snowshoes. You know, kettlebell has the, the kind of a larger handle. So what you do is you put your foot through there and then you just work on flexion. So that would be a good variation to help strengthen her psoas. And the second group, um, maybe you just want to do sagittal step-ups this time. That'd, that'd be fine. Maybe we load them up a little more. And then we do pull-ups and this time we focus on uh, chin-ups. And then we do reverse Nordics instead of Nordics. And then now we add in goblets for the, the second workout. And then we do a uh, variation reverse hypers or something for glutes. And then uh, some type of, maybe you do the, the jumping jacks here on the second workout. And when you come back to the third workout, now let's do the, the step ups first. So you would just move these to the first one and really load those up. Maybe even put a bar on her back and, you know, we're getting, uh, you know, a solid 10 reps per side. And instead of doing push ups, now we do a landmine press and then we do, we throw in another hip flexion exercise. And then we're going to get into goblets now, into Aussies, into Nordics again, because the prior workout, we did a reverse Nordics. So we got Nordics, reverse Nordics, then Nordics. And now we're going to do, uh, we go back to the pistols and then we do um, Copenhagen planks, which are really great for the adductors and also your side core. And then you maybe you come up with a little game. You do some jumping jacks into a pull up into a push up. So it's like you do five jumping jacks into one push ups into one chin up and you you do a little game or something like that. So that's what that week would look like. And then the following week, I essentially start back here on, on day one, but I would just go heavier. And that's what's so important as a new trainer is you can't get lost in the minutia of, of fantasizing that your client wants all these new exercises. You read what she wants. She wants to feel better. She wants to move better. She wants to be intimate with her partner and not have her hips lock up. And when that happens, that's the value of what we're, of what we're capable of. And we don't need to keep throwing our clients 20, 30 new exercises per time. You address their concerns. You give them viable solutions with the exercises or the correctives, if you want to call them. And then we overload the patterns that are going to give her the aesthetics that she wants. And when is she going to start noticing a, a good change? I always say a minimum of three months. That's when you look back after 36 sessions of training regularly. Not only is your mile time going to get better, we'll start implementing jumps and your jumps aren't going to be bad on your knees. And you're going to take that six minute mile, sorry, the six mile run, and you're going to start doing it in 55, maybe even 50 minutes. And then that's how your body's going to really start changing. And your mindset's going to be different at work now. You're going to be more effective at work because your workouts are better. So that's how I would address the flexors and this program. Does anyone have any questions? Chris, I got two quick questions. Yep. One of them, uh, what's the main difference between that frog pump and a hip thrust? So frog pump is going to be typically body weight. And you can also do it with uh, light dumbbells, but you want to, uh, a frog pump is, is like, you know, you sit like this, kind of a weird position, don't look at my eyes, but you just drive your heels in together and then you thrust up, whereas a hip thrust, you're going to be here. Okay, gotcha. And then, um, thank you. And then the last question is, would there be value in, I know you spent a good amount of time on that warm up. would you take some of those warm up exercises and instead of just doing it as the warm up, would you take some of them out and incorporate them into the accessory portion of it? Definitely, yeah, that, that's a great observation, Mark. You could definitely do that. So, so let's do these, the band walks on your toes. You could take those and put them here for the band flexes because you could even get the flexion and then AB duct out there and you could do like a little variation there. Yeah, you're hundred percent correct. Thanks, Chris, good stuff. Yep. It's Keisha, I have a question. Um, yep. To piggyback on that, would you, what about actually doing those same ones in the warm up? 
uh, not necessarily Bye, all of them, but having some of them um, repeated in the rest of the program. Work as well. So for example, you do your, uh, say you did airplanes in there. Uh, you could definitely put those back in there. And, and I would just let them know because uh, okay. we did the uh, single leg bridges. So if you wanted to do these single leg bridges down here instead of the pistols, that'd be perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Any Chris, other questions? Would you, yep. would you um, like, what are your thoughts on stretching? Cause I've had a, like an older PT tell me that like, don't stretch, just strengthen. Hmm. My uh, stretching is, is it's interesting because I feel it's very emotional. Like I would agree with your PT uh, to a certain extent, but I can't tell you how many times I've met people and I've, I've kind of had a loose tongue. Like, oh yeah, stretching stupid. And they're like, what do you mean? Like I've been stretching for the last 35 years and I swear by it. And now I like offended. I'm like, oh shit. Like, I'm not like saying you're a bad person. I think stretching has its, its value. Uh, I would encourage guys to stretch more because guys typically suck with mobility. And, and so like, if you can't touch your hands behind your back, if you can't do it on both sides, I think guys, when you're watching a show, you know, grab a towel and you're working on doing this, uh, the wall sit, I love doing it where you, you put your, the V, they do that in gymnastics to work on the splits. I think that's great for your adductors because those fuckers are super, super just overcharged. Um, your psoas as well. I think that doing that 90-90 drill, uh, I have a respect for for stretching because I think it's it's very valuable. And we, we seem to kind of pick on the science because we don't understand it. Like you'll say, don't stretch before workout, you compromise force production. That's true, but the studies looked at 60 second holds and no one for the life of them does a 60 second hold. And so I actually find as like in the corporate environment, a lot of your clients really love the stretching. So if you were to do this workout with her, and then at the end, you're done at 350 and she started at three, go to the stretching area or like isolate one of those aerobic rooms and spend 10 minutes stretching. And I do it selfishly. That's how I actually got really good with my hip mobility and my shoulder mobility, because every client that will come in, I would spend five, 10 minutes at the end working on my own stretching, which I said that they needed to do, but they needed it as well. Everyone could benefit from some type of arm stretch and abductor and, and T-spine mobility and a deep, a deep um, squat. So I think that uh, stretching is kind of underrated. Uh, I definitely wouldn't, if I had to compare the two, I'd actually even say stretching is underrated, whereas foam rolling is more overrated because we don't incorporate it properly. That's just my two cents, though. Hey Chris, did you ever see the thing from David Goggins on Joe Rogan about his stretching? That was yeah. Amazing. It's pretty it was fascinating crazy. stuff. Now, I would also challenge a lot of that because of how aggressive that he was with his training. Yeah, so you take an individual and, and he tells you, I mean, he's just a meathead times a million. And then like, I appreciate that. And I think the guy's a badass and I loved his book and everything, but it's like, you push your body so far, it's going to, you're going to get calluses. Right. And so you're going to develop that in, I mean, all the rep, I mean, the guy fucking <laughs> randomly shows up in Vegas and is like, yeah, okay, I'm going to run a marathon today. It's like he's just a different monster. And so yeah. the wear and tear that he put onto his body, I mean, he, he, it added value, but if he would have been incorporating stuff like this during his training, he wouldn't have had to go to those extremes. And so you read his book and he tells you that even today, I think he spends, he says two hours every day stretching. That's because of all the shit that he did to his body in the, in the, in the previous aspects. Great book, by the way. If you guys haven't listened to it, uh, Can't Hurt Me. That's my book of the year in 2020. Freaking awesome. Great book. Any other questions on this? All right. So tomorrow we're going to get into the last portion of the body mass equation. We're going to address the notorious uh, metabolism and how as we age, we just pack on these magical pounds taking a look at um, a B body mass equation from a guy who works at Netflix. We're going to do that in the morning. And then we'll also address the rest of the scapular anatomy. And then tomorrow evening at four o'clock, we will get into another program. 
All right, y'all have a great rest of the night. We'll see you later.